This is Trevor Benko. And this is Ben Jordan. We're with TGB Supplements. Today we're going to do a video talking about the best anti-estrogen, uh, different types of anti-estrogens, what they can be used for, and the best way to use them for your advantage. Uh, so starting off, you have CIRMs, which are selective estrogen receptor modulators, and then you have your aromatase inhibitors. There's two types of aromatase inhibitors. You have your type 1, which is a steroidal suicidal inhibitors. And then there's a type 2, which are non-steroidal, non-suicidal inhibitors, uh, which just block the aromatase enzyme. Uh, so starting off, we're going to get into the type 1, which are the suicidal inhibitors, uh, which in my opinion are the best ones out there if they're used correctly. Uh, you want to touch on that? Yeah, the most potent out of the suicidals is going to be eximistane or aromacin. Um, that's probably the most potent. Plus you get the IGF-1 increase out of it as well. Uh, with the suicidals, you get some anabolic effect. Uh, Formistane is another really common one. All you guys that used former on back in the day. Uh, 6-OXO, which was brought to the market by Patrick Arnold. 6-Bromo, uh, that's another really good one. It can help control prolactin. And ATD, which has a little bit of an infamous quality of being an anti-androgen. It has a little bit of an anti-androgen effect. Uh, Formistane is a little less effective at reducing estrogen or aromatase as compared to eczemastain. Uh, I believe the study that I saw, it was like 91% of the aromatase and uh, the eczemastain was at like a 97%, which was like 1% higher than Arimidex, 1% lower than Letrozole. So it's kind of right in the middle. Eczemastain's probably the most, uh, I'd say the most effective in my opinion, as far as giving you good results without a lot of negative side effects. Right, and, and the suicidals, they don't crush your cholesterol or lipid as bad as something like the Arimidex or the Letrozole. And not quite as hard on, on the uh, HDL, which is your good cholesterol. Uh, they also raise IGF-1, which is uh, you know, a potent muscle building uh, compound and can be very beneficial. And I believe Formistane and Eximistane both are somewhere around 26 to 28 percent increase in IGF-1, which is a... Uh, now these numbers I'm just getting from a study that I had read. I believe it was in a muscular development way back in the early 2000s. Plus it's a lot easier to keep your estrogen in check. Um, say you miss a dose or what have you, say you're on a trip and you forget your stuff. It'll slowly allow estrogen to taper back up versus something say like Arimidex, you'll have a sharp rebound if you miss that half life. Yeah, or if you're coming off a cycle, you know, and you were on cycle, say you're using Arimidex when you come off, you're gonna have a, a big time drop, uh, which will cause a rebound and it's gonna make it hard to recover. Uh, there's a way that using aromatase inhibitors, they can boost your testosterone, your natural testosterone output on a pathway called the negative feedback loop. And the way that this works is by lowering your estrogen lower than normal, it makes your body think that your testosterone is low because that's how it makes estrogen. So when it recognizes that your body's low in estrogen, it tries to produce more testosterone so it can make more estrogen. And by blocking the aromatase enzyme, you're preventing it from aromatizing that into estrogen. So it allows your testosterone to increase a little higher than normal. This is a, a very important part of a good post-cycle therapy, in my opinion, along with stimulating luteinizing hormone. Uh, another thing I really like about the type 1 suicide inhibitors, uh, aromatase inhibitors, is that they are actually androgens as well. They have a little bit of an anabolic effect. Uh, for example, formistain converts to 4 hydroxy testosterone, which is almost like a, a very mild anabolic. Uh, mm -hmm. Some have even compared it to like a primobolin, mm -hmm. uh, very high dose, obviously, of formistain. Uh, formistain actually was in an injectable form at one time. Uh, what was the name of it? Lentheron. Lentheron. Mm -hmm. uh, and they used to dose it, I believe it was like 200 or 250 milligrams, uh, one to two injections per week, every four to seven days. And it was very effective in that, in that way. Uh, but yeah, they would compare it to like a, a mild dose of primobolin and you know, it actually had some anabolic effects. Uh, I really like Formistain. We, you know, Black Lion Research, we used to carry a product of theirs called Formaron. We were the first company to carry it and uh, we actually did very well with that product. I was one of the original testers. I really enjoyed it. It worked well for me even, you know, with testosterone, even on a cycle. Now, granted, I never run testosterone very, very high, so typically never go over 400 milligrams. I'm, normally on a replacement dose so but for me it worked great i've had blood work done many times it worked very well and that's transdermally 
Uh, I really do like Aromasin. Yeah, myself with the former on, I used it for probably three years straight. Never had no problems as well with estrogen. Probably my favorite as well. Yeah, I mean, it just it was easy to use and seemed to work very well. Mm -hmm. uh, I like the little rush you got from it. Yeah, you do get a, a little bit of a like a head rush right when you put it on. You could feel it working. Uh, eczema stain is probably my favorite now. Um, that's my go-to. I typically like to use that. Uh, I dose it at 12.5 milligrams every other day, and that's usually plenty for me. Uh, depending on you know what you're doing and your body, you may need more or less. That's why you always get your blood work, guys. You got to see there's there's really no set in stone dosage for anybody because like Trevor's saying, everybody produces certain enzymes. I might be very sensitive to estrogen. There might be a guy. He could get away with running 200 milligrams a week of testosterone for replacement and not really need much of an anti-estrogen. It's not probable, but it's possible. So always get your blood work done to have everything dialed in. Yeah, I mean, typically aromatase inhibitors, the primary action is to block the fat enzyme aromatase. Uh, so, you know, by preventing that aromatase, it prevents the conversion of your testosterone to estrogen to a certain extent. In females, it's much more effective than it is in males not really sure why that is i don't know if they understand that you know what the differences are i wonder if it could be because females contain more body mass index of fat than males it's definitely a possibility i just thought about that and also you know it could be the fact that they have such a, a lower testosterone level compared to men right which is probably uh, more likely i would believe mm -hmm. uh you know less chance of conversion so it's going to be more effective right you're gonna have less you know you're gonna have less testosterone so yep. uh to convert uh, but yeah, I mean, that's this primary effect. Now, the more fat cells you have, the more estrogen you could have because of this, or more aromatase, uh, which is the enzyme that converts the test to estrogen. So, uh, you know, getting into a little bit more detail, some of the older ones like uh, the 6 oxo, Patrick Arnold had developed that back in the day. It was supposed to be a natural suicidal inhibitor, and uh, it was effective as well. Typically, it was dosed between 300 and 600 milligrams orally, and guys would run that. You know, anywhere from uh, I'd say uh, six to eight weeks was the normal back then uh, when it was on the market. Yeah, the Gaspari Novid XXT was famous for that one as well. A lot of guys like that product. Now, Six Bromo, it was a little bit different. Uh, it has two components to it. The first component, I believe, the alpha version uh, that it breaks down to, is actually it, it prevents the the testosterone from being bound to other sex hormone binding globulin as well as other things like being converted to DHT uh, where the second part the beta version of 6-bromo actually was the aromatase inhibitor and you know it was a suicidal inhibitor so it was pretty potent as well uh, this was around back when the pro-hormones were big I remember seeing this supplement it never really picked up too much it was pretty expensive uh, I used it one time uh, it was okay it worked okay for me but you also had to watch, you know, it could affect your sex drive negatively, just like any uh, suicidal inhibitor or any aromatase inhibitor. If your estrogen gets too low, it will hurt your sex drive. So that's something to look out for as well. Uh, let's see, I guess that pretty much covers the uh, the type one. Yeah, next we'll go into the, the type selective two. Yeah, aromatase which is, inhibitor, like your Remodex, your Letrozole. Cytodrin was one of those. Mm -hmm. That was one of the original, wasn't it? Yeah, that was one of the ones back in the 90s. Wasn't it toxic? Uh, I believe there was. It there had, was something with cytogen. Well, it actually was very, very effective at lowering the estrogen. Uh, I believe almost too much, right? Mm-hmm. I think they were saying that it would actually, uh, that it would actually uh, take the estrogen down too low. Right. And, and I think, you know, another thing to look out for is the they can actually have a negative impact on your thyroid or your thyroid stimulating hormone. I know that's a negative effect of eczema stain. So it could actually lower your thyroid output. Yeah, with the with the cytodrin, I think guys, they call me to use like 125 to 250 milligrams every other day. Yeah, uh, it, it, that one, guys didn't, you know, nah. take that for too long. I mean, it, it was it was one of the first ones out there and quickly it was replaced. Uh, yeah, that, that one wasn't too yeah, good. Yeah, I'm almost positive there was some kind of issue with toxicity with cytodrin. Yeah, I think I remember hearing that as yep. well. Uh, all right, the the big one is probably Arimidex and Astrazole. Uh, this is typically what physicians uh, prescribe now. 
that's that's one of the main I'd say the main prescription for yep. TRT and doses range anywhere from a uh, quarter of a milligram or 250 micrograms to one milligram per day uh, one milligram is usually pretty high for most people I usually take uh, 0.25 milligrams or 250 micrograms daily or I'll take uh, uh, 500 micrograms every other day when I use a Remedex. Now it is going to be a little harder on your HDL. It will kill your cholesterol, your good cholesterol. You got to be aware of that. Uh, and you know, I just, I don't know, I don't feel quite as good on that as I do on Eximistine. So. Yeah, I mean, it just seems like any of the suicidals just. I think it's the, uh, the androgenic properties that yeah. they have. Uh, yeah, so I mean, overall, you know, I'm, I'm I tend to lean towards the uh, suicidal inhibitors. Yeah, and you got something like letrozole, which can damn near annihilate your estrogen. So that's another one you'd have to be really cautious with dial in too. Yeah, some guys are, you know, they're fans of that. Uh, I think- Greg you know, Valentino, isn't he a big fan of letrozole? I'm not sure, but I know that, you know, you know, if you had gynecomastia, uh, maybe that would be something to try mm -hmm. to really, you know, crush the estrogen, try to, to reduce your gynecomastia, but other than that, I mean, I, I wouldn't use it. It's not something that I typically would use. Uh, remember Teslac? Uh, that was another one from back in the 90s. Yeah. It was one of the first generation steroidal mm -hmm. uh, aromatase inhibitors. Yeah, I think they took that at a maximum of 250 makes a day. Yeah, it permanently attached to the enzyme, yeah. the aromatase enzyme. It just wasn't as strong as the, the newer generations. Yeah. But like we were saying, that's one of the originals. It's about, I think, a 50% reduction, mm -hmm. they would say. Uh, let's see, what else we got on the uh, type 2s? Type we went two. over f uh, Letrozole. We got a Remedex. We got a Teslac. I think that's it, isn't it? Pretty much covers the main. No, there's some newer generation. Isn't there newer generation ones? Uh, third generation, right? Yeah. The Vorazole, it's an Amidazole based competitive inhibitor. It's something like a Remedex. Uh, they was testing it a little bit, but it got withdrawn when there was no detected duration compared to like a progestational agent, Megastrol acetate. So instead they focused on others like the anastrozole, letrozole, or eximistine. Yeah. Yeah, which are your more common uh, products out there that you hear about now. Uh, okay, so going into the next anti-estrogen, uh, I would say, you know, we're going to get into the SERMs. The selective estrogen receptor modulators. Uh, there's some some changes in variety there. Uh, you know, you got your Clomid, your Novadex. Uh, what else we got? The Fomara, the Ral Fomara, Raloxifen, the Vista. Mm -hmm. uh, those are some of the the big names out there now. But Tamoxifen, Novadex, and uh, Clomid are probably your big two. Mm -hmm. And uh, those are typically used. Uh, some some of the old school guys use that over an aerobatase inhibitor uh, because it's easier on the cholesterol, and it doesn't actually lower your estrogen. It blocks the receptors. Something like Novadex, though, there, there's a decrease in IGF, so that exactly. might not be very beneficial if you're trying to bulk. So. And it's also something you don't want to run with 19 nors. It can have a, a negative effect there as well. Yeah, doesn't it cause an upregulation in the sensitivity to prolactin? Yes. Uh, so you know that's something to keep an eye out for uh also i don't know i'm just not a big fan myself uh, tamoxifen actually has a little bit of liver toxicity you guys don't realize that you know it can be hard on your liver over time and depending on how you use it especially with the uh, decrease in igf1 it's just not something that i'm a big fan of but i remember when we did that interview with john meadows right uh, on the anabolic cartel podcast mm -hmm. uh, that's what he said he used so uh, everybody to each their own, I guess. You gotta kind of see what works for you. Now, Clomid I've used for PCT, and it was very effective. You know, it's a fertility drug. It can restore spermogenesis and uh, you know get your fertility back. It also can boost luteinizing hormone. Now, I did notice some side effects with Clomid: uh, blurry vision, I'd see spots, uh, moodiness. You know, I kind of just emotional, like you know, it definitely made me a little bit more emotional. What about you, Novadex or anything like that? Yeah, I've used Novadex before. I had a flare up one time. Um, I was noticing like around the time that I would chain chest, I'd start to get like an itchy sensitivity, and it it knocked it away. It was like a week or two. I don't really have too too much experience with it. Yeah, I've used it a time or two as well, uh, but main, mainly for PCT. Never really used it uh, just solely for the anti-estrogen effects. Uh, 
I mean, that pretty much covers everything that we wanted to hit today. Now there is a new generation. They're called SERDs. They're selective estrogen receptor degraders, and I, I believe Fasladex is that one. Um, I don't know if that would be a good thing that it's degrading your estrogen receptors. It's like a down regulator. Yeah, because you do need estrogen. It, uh, you definitely need your estrogen. I mean, it could it could hurt your your uh, your gains actually if your your estrogen is low. It can right. make your joints hurt, uh, stiffness in the joints. I mean, long term it could cause a lot of negative side effects. Yeah, this isn't something that's been used Bone commonly loss. or had a whole lot of research looked into. I mean, it's possible it could work very well, but if it degrades the receptor, how long is it going to be degraded? Is it going to be permanent? Is it going to take it to a point that's too low to where you do have those side effects? Then there's nothing you can do about it. I believe they're looking for the same type of thing with the antigen receptor. They're called SARDs, uh, which are actually, they're going to be a selective antigen receptor degraders as well. So that's kind of, they were using the SARDs to uh, kind of find the equal parallel. I wonder if that'd be for like DHT but like type stuff, like Probably. prostate, hair mm -hmm. loss. Huh. Uh, but once again, I mean, that's not something I would ever want to no. use. No. I mean, so... You never know. <laughs> Let them test that on somebody else. <laughs> yeah, that's not, not something I'd be interested in trying out. Uh, that pretty much wraps everything up. I mean, I think I've touched on everything pretty well. A lot of different stuff out there. Uh, best thing we could tell you is monitor your cholesterol. Mm -hmm. Keep an eye out for side effects. Remember, low estrogen could cause bone loss, joint pain, joint stiffness, it, loss in sex drive. Yep. You low don't, mood. Yeah, it can make you depressed. Yep. You don't want that. Uh, so keep an eye on your estradiol, get your estrogen checked, and try to find what dose works best for you. And that's the thing is you're going to have a little trial and error to see which ones you like best, that you feel best on. It, it might be Novidex, it might be Letrozole, it might be Um There really is no perfect aromatase inhibitor or serum for everybody. And they're really being studied yet, you know, they're so new, it's, it's not, there's still people that don't think they should be used at all. So, I mean... You know, they're typically used for breast cancer. That's where most of the research has been done, unfortunately, uh, because, you know, it, it is now something that, you know, guys are using for testosterone replacement, but there really aren't that many studies with men, uh, healthy men. So, you know, you got to kind of do your own research there and just keep an eye on the blood work. That's the best thing we can say uh, to each their own, pretty much. But, uh, you know, that gives you an idea. You could check some of these out. <coughs> research them learn a little bit more for yourself and then like we said get some blood work done mm -hmm. on a stable dose so you know what it does to you yeah like we we're saying a lot more user friendly comes from the suicidals like an eczema stain uh, odds are you're probably going to like that best out of all of them just for the stability of the bloodstream plus like we said it acts like an androgen as well so i'd give those a shot probably first that should that should be enough to take care of it if you're looking for an aromatase inhibitor all right, guys, that wraps it up. We got more videos coming. I uh, hope you guys will subscribe. Check out the Anabolic Cartel podcast. Episode 6 is releasing soon. You can email us if you want to ask us some questions or uh, just post in the comments below. Uh, hit the like button if you enjoyed the video, and we got more, more things to come. So take care.